If you need to extend the Wi-Fi signal in your home, the TP-Link AX3000 extender might be exactly what you need. Wait, what? It might be exactly what you need? Well, the reason that I say this is that it all depends upon your individual needs and how you'll be using this extender. So in this episode from Network From Home, we're going to be detailing PC Magazine's top overall extender for 2025, which is the TP-Link AX3000, and I'll also be detailing the different use cases where this extender might be a perfect fit for your home network. With that, let's jump right into it. Your TP-Link AX3000 extender, this is what it looks like. It has antennas that fold up, and overall it's a pretty simple device. On the back, you can see it's made to connect to a power outlet, and all you have to do is you have to make sure this device is connected to a power outlet that's within the range of your router's Wi-Fi signal. The only other thing on this device is you have an ethernet port on the side. We'll get into this a little bit later, why it has this, but essentially it's used for Wi-Fi access mode. Additionally, this device will extend both your 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz Wi-Fi networks. It supports the 802.11ax Wi-Fi protocol. Essentially what this means is that it can support any internet plan that you might have. It supports speeds greater than one gigabit per second. So you don't have to worry about this being a bottleneck for any of your bandwidth or your devices. Another important point there is that if your router supports Wi-Fi 5 and you buy this extender that supports Wi-Fi 6, it's not going to all of a sudden upgrade your home network to Wi-Fi 6. You need a router that supports Wi-Fi 6 before you can fully take advantage of all those features. In terms of price, I got this device from a retailer at around $100. It might seem a little pricey, but keep in mind, if this is PC Magazine's top overall extender, it's going to last you a long time, and it supports the latest and greatest technologies, Honestly, that sounds like a pretty good price to me. You know how I said at the beginning of this video that the TP-Link AX3000 might be a perfect fit for your home network? Well, the reason I said this is because it all depends upon the operating mode that you're going to use it in. One of the coolest parts about the AX3000 extender is that it has three different modes of operation that you can use it in. The first is standard extender mode. In this mode of operation, it operates just like any other extender. You'll see a million videos online about people complaining about extenders and their performance. And honestly, it's not unwarranted. In extender mode, you'll be able to expand your Wi-Fi signal, but it comes with limited performance and any devices connecting to this extender will experience limited bandwidth. The second mode of operation is access point mode. As I mentioned, when walking through the device, that's what this ethernet port is made for. In access point mode, you can essentially connect your router and your extender with an ethernet cable. And then this extender just essentially becomes another access point in your home network. You get great performance when using this mode. The only limitation of course, is that you have to connect your router and your extender with an ethernet cable. The third and final mode is called easy mesh mode. It essentially is just turning your home network into a mesh network and turning your extender into a mesh node. The key here is that in order to use this mode, you have to have a TP-Link router that supports easy mesh mode. And if you have that, then what you can do, you can connect your router and your extender in mesh mode. You'll experience great performance because the difference is between standard extender mode and easy mesh mode your extender and your router will communicate on a separate Wi-Fi channel than the rest of your devices are operating on. This streamlines performance. You'll get great internet speeds in this mode. The catch of course is that you just need that TP-Link router as well that supports easy mesh mode. So in short, if you plan on using this device in access point mode or easy mesh mode, you're going to get great performance. And if you're going to use it in standard extender mode, you just need to be able to make sure that the bandwidth that this extender is providing, in other words, the limited bandwidth it's going to be providing, will still be sufficient for your needs. You still might want to buy this device if you're going to use it in standard extender mode. You just need to be aware of the limitations of this mode of operation. If you don't just wanna take my word for it, and honestly, I don't blame you, I have data to back this up. 
I performed extensive testing with this TP-Link AX3000 extender in the three different modes to see what kind of performance I would get from each one. In standard extender mode, I got 140 megabits per second of download speed and 24 megabits per second of upload speed. With access point mode, things were a little bit better here. I got 225 megabits per second of download speed. And again, 24 megabits per second of upload speed. And then the king of them all in mesh mode, I got 270 megabits per second of download speed. And again, 24 megabits per second of upload speed. So there it is, it's all in the data right there. You get much better performance with mesh and access point modes. But honestly, I was still satisfied with standard extender mode. With 140 megabits per second, you can still support multiple devices streaming, multiple devices accessing the internet through that extender. So overall, you can get decent internet performance with all three modes. All right, now let's get into the most important question. Who should be buying this TP-Link AX3000 extender? Well, first and foremost, if you have a TP-Link router that supports easy mesh, and you want to see what it's like to have a mesh Wi-Fi network, the best thing to do is to buy one of these extenders and put it in easy mesh mode. This option is gonna be a lot cheaper than going out and buying a whole new mesh Wi-Fi system that'll cost you multiple hundreds of dollars. You can just dip your toe in the water. You can buy one extender, see if you like the mesh Wi-Fi network, and then if you like it and you need more Wi-Fi coverage, you can buy another extender and just add on to your mesh network as you go. Another great use case for this device is if you have an existing mesh Wi-Fi network in your home. Let's say you have three mesh nodes, you have a large home, and maybe it doesn't provide quite enough Wi-Fi signal to all areas of your home. Honestly, you can just buy one more extender, tack it onto your existing mesh network, and then you're good to go and you don't have to worry about performance issues. Another option here, let's say you either don't have a TP-Link router, or you have a TP-Link router and it doesn't support easy mesh mode. And in either of these cases, it's not easy to connect your extender to your router with an ethernet cable. Honestly, in these cases, standard extender mode might still fit the bill. A perfect use case here is for me in my garage. I don't get great Wi-Fi signal from my router in my garage, but at the same time, I know if I'm accessing the internet down there, it's only going to be me accessing the internet. Sure, I might be streaming videos, I might be browsing the internet, I might be streaming music, but for one person, if I'm getting 140 megabits per second through this device with my current internet plan, I know that that's plenty for any internet needs of one person. So basically what this means is it's a perfect fit for me in my home. I can put in an extender in the garage, I can get great Wi-Fi signal, and I can get enough bandwidth for my internet needs. So this is something you want to consider. I previously made another video talking about the different bandwidth that different internet activities require. So you wanna go take a look at that. You'll also wanna analyze what you're getting from your current internet plan. If you have a lower speed internet plan, just chop that in half and expect that that might be what you're getting from your extender. And if that is a limitation and you're not gonna get enough bandwidth to do all the things you want to do in that area, then maybe the AX3000 isn't a great fit if you need to use it in extender mode. Another time when you should not get this TP-Link AX3000 is if you're currently getting poor internet performance from your router. If you're getting poor internet performance from your router, this extender is not gonna help you because your extender essentially uses the connection that your router gets from the internet. So if you start with a bad connection at your router, your extender is not gonna improve anything. If anything, it's gonna get slightly worse performance than your router. So that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking that your extender can save the day. You really need to look at these situations, maybe get a new router, or analyze and see if you need to upgrade your internet plan if it's causing problems. However, if one of these previous use cases that are a good fit for the TP-Link AX3000 sounds like how you'll be using the device, I think it's a fantastic device. PC Magazine obviously thinks so as well. They ranked it as their top overall extender for 2025. On top of that, you're paying a high price on a monthly basis for your internet plan. For an extra $100 one-time fee, you can make sure that you're maximizing that internet plan and you can access the internet 
in all areas of your home. If this video helped you in the buying process for picking out an extender, I'd appreciate it if you give it a like. And I'd also love to see in the comments section what mode you're using your extender in and what kind of performance you're getting. As always, thanks for checking out this episode from Network From Home, and we'll catch you on the next one.